Welcome to worship on this Ash Wednesday. Welcome to all of you and to those worshiping at home. There are a number of folks at home. So let's welcome them by waving to the camera there. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, tonight, we'll be sharing an imposition of ashes. And you're welcome to come up to the altar rail at your own pace when it's time for that. And we'll also share in Holy Communion. This Lent during Wednesday and Sunday worship, our theme is Open Our Lives, God. We turn to God seeking release from all that binds, seeking a spacious and expansive experience of God so that we may share God's love and mercy. The next five Wednesdays during Lent, we'll pray for God to open our eyes, hands, hearts, ears, and lives. Worship is from 5.30 to 6, and there'll be soup suppers following in the fellowship hall. We have a return to soup suppers. We haven't had them since March of 2020, so I'm pretty excited about that. And during Sunday worship, we'll reflect on questions as well as visual art that can open us to deeper faith. On Sundays, we'll be singing a new To Us liturgy, setting 12, found in the All Creation Sings Hymnal Supplement. And that is our liturgy for tonight as well. Um, and I just really, we do need that basket eventually because our offering tonight and throughout the season of Lent will be used for the Youth Lent Project, uh, focusing on housing insecurity. And when it is not in the middle of a blizzard, there will be a toy house created by some of our confirmation students where you can put your offering. And tonight there'll be a basket. And you can put your offering there or just into the offering plate. Um, the confirmants came um, engaged in a process of discerning what really was on their hearts as concerns for needs of the world and what really matters to them. And they discerned that housing insecurity locally and globally was very pressing right now. So we will be giving half of the funds to a shelter in Waterloo, House of Hope, that serves homeless women and children, and half to those impacted by the earthquake in Syria and Turkey through Lutheran disaster response. So, and the House of Hope is some place where the kids will be able to go and visit and serve and build relationship as well. So we're grateful for our youth leading that. And if you're at home, you can give through the Tithely Secure portal um, by choosing Lent Easter for your offering. And all of the offerings tonight will go to that. And our communications folks have put together a wonderful one-page resource detailing all of the offerings during this season of Lent. You can see that out in the gathering space, or um, it was emailed yesterday, and it's also online under the worship tab. We rise now in body and or spirit and join in our gathering song found on page 31 in the front of the purple book, page 31.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our repentance, prayers, and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today is God's response to the people of God who are troubled by the ineffectiveness of their fasts shortly after the return of Israel from exile in Babylon. A reading from Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and God will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, Then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom shall be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a water garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruin shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. Word of God, word of life.
The ministry of the gospel endures many challenges and hardships. Through this ministry, God's reconciling activity in the death of Christ reaches into the depths of our lives to bring us into a right relationship with God. A reading from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the one to be sin who knew no sin, so so that in Christ we might become the righteous of God. As we work together, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For God says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet we are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and not yet killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces as to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who is in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Beloved people of God, grace to you and peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. This year, the word reward stood out to me in our gospel reading. Jesus says that word seven times in this short passage. We don't often talk about rewards on Ash Wednesday. It is, after all, a day of repentance, a day of pondering mortality, a day that begins a season of fasting and sacrificial giving. It seems to kind of miss the point to be talking about reward, joy, blessing. Yet, Jesus does seem to be inviting us to do just that in his teaching for us tonight. Jesus says that when we have integrity in our faith practices, when the inside matches the outside, then God rewards us. What does that mean? Are we talking stars and our crown in heaven after we die? More rooms in that big mansion that Jesus is preparing for us? Or is it something else? But also, even when it's not Ash Wednesday, can Lutherans even talk about rewards? Jesus often sounds less Lutheran than I'd prefer. He's quite good at messing with our categories. But all this talk of rewards sounds like works righteousness, like earning our salvation by being good enough through good works. What's up with this, Jesus? I wonder if our first reading from the prophet Isaiah can help us imagine <clears throat> the rewards that Jesus promises. Isaiah says, if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called repairers of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Isaiah says when we live in God's ways, <clears throat> we experience reward. We experience the reward of participating in God's shalom, God's kingdom of justice and mercy, the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. As we live in God's ways, we are healed, we are made whole, together with all people and all creation. That is the most wonderful reward we can imagine. Healing, wholeness, well-being, peace for us, for the whole cosmos. This reward isn't something that happens after we die. Pie in the sky, sweet by and by. We experience this reward now and forever as we live in God's ways. Throughout the Gospel of Matthew, when Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about God's kingdom that has come near, that is at hand now and always, not some faraway place that we go to in the afterlife. So I wonder if Jesus is saying that as we fast and give and pray with integrity, not seeking human rewards, then 
we will have a greater capacity to recognize and participate in God's kingdom, a greater capacity to see that the kingdom of God is present among us, a greater capacity to recognize the ways in which we are invaluable in making God's justice and righteousness present for God's creation. Tonight, we are called to return to God and God's ways. As we'll hear in our liturgy in just a bit, we are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. Given this, Jesus calls us to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. This discipline is not to punish us, not to take away our joy, not to make us feel even worse about ourselves. This discipline of Lent is to restore us and all peoples to fullness of joy, to life as God intends it. So together, let us repent. Let us ponder mortality. Let us fast, pray, and give with integrity so that we and all creation might know the life that really is life as participants in God's kingdom. This is our great reward now and always. Let's take a moment for silent prayer.
friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the disciplines of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament, let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. And let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another using the Ash Wednesday Confession printed in your bulletin. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, we have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O oh God for your mercy is great. Amen. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You're invited to come up for ashes as you are ready, and we won't have a hymns during the imposition of ashes. We'll just have some music offered by Brooke tonight.
accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior. Almighty God, showers mercy upon you, forgives you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthens you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps you in eternal life. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Holy God, you gather your church and call us to return to you. Accompany us throughout our Lenten pilgrimage. Create in us new hearts that beat in time with yours, and renew in us the joy of life in your service. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Renew your creation, O God. Bring relief to places affected by extreme weather events. Inspire us to advocate for policies that reduce carbon emissions and create sustainable communities. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Renew the nations, O God. Loosen the bonds of injustice and bring an end to all violence and oppression, especially in Ukraine, Palestine, Israel, and Haiti. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your people, O God. Send your love and protection to all who cry to you, especially the people of Turkey and Syria. Equip us with the compassion to care for those who experience homelessness, food insecurity, economic hardship, illness, and grief, especially Brigham, Mickey, June, the Caton family, Dale, Marion, Stephanie, Donna, Harland, Jereen, Glenn, Janet, Lowell, Ed, and Utah. Merciful God, renew this congregation, O God. Inspire our education ministry. Uphold our children, youth, and family director, Kelly, and all those who teach and lead. Bless our children and youth with curiosity and wonder at your great love for them and for the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Holy God, even as we hear the words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We know that our whole lives are held securely in your unfailing love and care. Be with us in our earthly journey, and at the end, gather us together with all the beloved into your mercy. Hear now the prayers of our hearts. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. We continue on page 36 in the front of the purple hymnal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Continue with the prayer found on page 38. As the shadows lengthen, we bless you, sheltering God. We glorify you for the endless starlit sky, deep with the mystery of your creative labor. Through all time and space, we praise you for the fertile earth and for life in the darkness holds and births. Plants of every variety, animals curled in sleep, humankind you shaped by your own hand. Stay with us, for it is evening. Stay with us, for it is evening. Through the night you led your people into freedom. At day's end you rained down manna in the wilderness. At sundown your sun brought healing to people in need. In the midday night, when Jesus died on the cross, life came forth for all. Stay with us, for it is evening. Stay with us, for it is evening. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our hearts burn within us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Like a mother hen, hold us close through the coming night. Watch with those who labor, accompany those who long for peaceful sleep. Welcome those whose waking will be only in you. Into our deepest nights, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, make here the body of Christ in the breaking of the bread in justice for our broken world, in rest for the weary. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. 
To you, O oh God, painter of both night and day, guiding star and healing sun, breath of peace and wind of change, be all glory, all honor, all praise, this night unto the coming dawn, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Here is abundance for the journey. Come and be filled. Those at home, Christ's body and blood is given for you each day. And uh, you all know how to do communion here, so you can just come on up. The ushers will direct you up. That's wonderful. Just, yes, the instructions are even in the bulletin, but welcome to the table. There is a place for you here.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and to touch the world with your love. Amen. the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Go forth into the world and serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faith faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.